In part one of redundancy versus resiliency, we looked at these two topics from a physical design perspective. Are we there yet? Not exactly. Let's take a look at it from a logical design perspective. Hey guys, this is Jim Schrader, and today we'll be talking about redundancy versus resiliency. But this time, we're gonna focus on the logical design. If you missed part one, which talks about redundancy versus resiliency from a physical design perspective, you can find the link in the info card at the top right-hand corner of your screen. So here's where we left off in part one. We have two geographically separate data pipes that enter each building in different locations. And don't get me wrong here, this is a great foundation, but at the end of the day, we're really just safeguarding against a single physical failure event. So what about the traffic that's flowing across the link? So in this situation, we have nice load balancing and neither path is exceeding the capacity of the circuit. There should be no drop packets and you're not gonna hear any user complaints. In fact, you're the hero. Now let's assume there is a failure in path B. Uh-oh things just changed significantly. Now path A receives all of the traffic that was transiting path B. The problem is that path A doesn't have the bandwidth to accommodate all the traffic. This means that some packets are going to get dropped. Now you're starting to hear user complaints about poor performance of Salesforce, dropped video conferences, and phone calls. In the blink of an eye, we've lost our hero status. So a lot of money was poured into deploying a resilient physical design. So leadership is not too happy that they just experienced a disruption to the business. That wasn't supposed to happen. So now they're asking, what can be done to make sure that this never happens again? But asking for more money is not an option. Well, the good news is, in the process of restoring path B, the team was able to capture what traffic was flowing across path A. We were able to break this traffic down into five classes and show the percentages of total traffic. While we can't increase the size of the circuits for each path, we can determine what traffic gets dropped when we exceed the capacity of the circuit. As is common in most businesses, a large percentage of the traffic is not business critical traffic. In this case, we class it all as general, web, and video. This includes browsing, downloading videos, updating email clients, syncing photos, push notifications, automated device updates, the list goes on and on. And if we have to drop traffic, this is the traffic we wanna drop. So we can see that voice, video, mission critical apps, and salesforce.com are the apps that matter. They total just 26% of the traffic running across path A during the failover. So when path B fails, we need to be able to run at 150% of the bandwidth of path A to fully accommodate the traffic on path B and have no traffic drops. That would be 1.5 gigabits. So taking 26% of this means we would need 390 megabits of bandwidth to accommodate all of our business critical applications and services. Looking a little deeper, we know that voice and video are sensitive to both delay and packet loss, so these need to get to the head of the line during congestion. For mission critical apps and salesforce.com, we really just need to ensure that we reserve adequate bandwidth. So without spending a penny, we can implement a solution leveraging quality of service or QoS to ensure that our business critical traffic is protected during congestion. This policy should be applied to both path A and path B. So in the event of a failure, either path can continue to support your business critical applications without any degradation. So design really matters and there are many, many layers to a network. The concepts in these two videos are just a small example of the design techniques employed by companies that can afford seasoned experts. If you wanna get the bigger picture, be sure to download our campus design guide. You can find the link in the info card above. And also, please be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more great tips on how you can improve your design without spending a penny.